there are three ways in which you can talk about literature. One of which is not acceptable for a literature review and two of which are. The first way in which you can talk about the literature is you can simply summarize the literature. So here's a paragraph that we've written about the literature around generational differences. So take a minute to read through this and I'll read it for you actually here. There are varying views on the nature of today's student. For example, Prensky, 2001, stated that the way today's youth learn is fundamentally different than previous generations due to their exposure to digital technology, leading him to coin the label digital natives to describe today's student. Howe and Strauss, 2000, were quite optimistic about today's generation of youth and indicated that these millennials were more involved, engaged, and aware than any previous generation. Conversely, Twenge, 2006, called today's youth the most narcissistic generation ever and used terms such as assertive, entitled, and miserable to describe what she labeled Generation Me. Now, as you can see here, based upon the summary, I've basically given you three different pieces of literature and summarized what each of them said. And as you can see from the second and third pieces of literature, the summary that each of these people have is actually quite different in terms of what we think of with today's student. And this is the difficulty or the problem with a summary of the literature and why it's not acceptable for literature reviews because each of these three pieces of literature have been presented with the same veracity and we really have no way as a reader to judge the claims that people have made here and whether or not they are based upon research and whether or not that research is reliable and valid. Now there are two ways in which we can talk about the literature that are acceptable for literature review that would essentially avoid this problem. So let's take a look at this passage again, but let's look at it through the lens of one of these particular uh, ways in which you can do it. So this is the same passage except for in this case I've provided a bit of context about each of the pieces of literature. So context is essentially the details about some of the literature that allows the reader to make a judgment about what is being said. And as you can see, I haven't added a lot of text here. In fact, I haven't even added a full sentence. Um, I've added on to the end of a sentence for the first one. And as you can see, I've added a phrase to the second one and third one. But it really does change how we look at this. So what we read from Prensky about these digital natives, that was based upon his perceptions and interactions with young people. Okay. What we read about millennials from Howe and Strauss was based upon survey responses from about 20, 2,000 youth in a single county in Virginia. What we read about Twenge and her idea around Generation Me was based on hundreds of thousands of responses over a 50-year period. So just based on that little bit of context that we've got there, we can start to make, as a reader, without the author having to do anything for us, some judgments about what we see here. For example, Howe and Strauss and Twenge, both of those pieces of research, or both of those pieces of literature are based upon research. What Prensky has written appears not to be based upon research. And even looking at the differences between Howe and Strauss, and Twinge. How and Strauss is, appears to be a single piece of research based on a survey that has about 2,000 responses for a single county in Virginia. Now, 2,000 responses may be something that would allow you to gain statistical significance for a single county, but it probably doesn't have the same level of power statistical power that something that has hundreds of thousands of responses over a 50-year period would have. So just by providing this little bit of context, it allows the reader to start making judgments about this. It allows the reader to critique the literature as opposed to simply summarizing the literature. 
Now, the second way in which we can critique the literature and the second way that it is acceptable to write about the literature when you're doing a literature review is to actually provide some evaluation as well. So evaluation is basically just judgment. And in some cases, it is um, judgment that is kind. In some cases, it's judgment that is factual. In some cases, it is judgment that is coy in nature. So what you see here in red now, and you can still see the context is in blue, and the original summary is in black, but in red here, what you've got is some evaluation or some judgment by the author so that they are telling us a little bit about what the author thinks about each of these pieces. So not only is Prensky stuff based upon perceptions and interactions with young people, but the author has made the judgment that they were unsystematic perceptions and interactions, which hints at the idea that, you know, it wasn't research at all, that this is basically just this guy's opinion. Similarly, if you look at the judgment that they've made on the second one, in addition to it being based upon about 2,000 survey responses in a single Virginia county, they've gone and told us that this specific county happens to be one of the most affluent in all of the United States, and then goes on to describe it a little bit. So it allows us to take a look at it and say, they said that millennials were quite optimistic about society and about the future and about their place in the world. And, you know, if I lived in one of the most affluent zip codes in the country, and if I came from a household where I had two working parents, both of whom were well-educated, that probably would make me a little bit more uh, optimistic uh, about my outlook on society in general. Um, you know, so that little bit of judgment there or evaluation, again, hints at the reliability or validity of that particular piece. Not to say that it's not reliable or valid, but to say that the specific context or setting where the research was done may not necessarily be representative of all millennials that currently live in the United States or all millennials um, worldwide. If you look at the context that's been added to the third one, in the first sentence there you see I, the author has added a couple of words to again provide a sense of judgment. So not only was it a hundred, not only was it hundreds of thousands of responses, but they were hundreds of thousands of responses to a validated instrument. Um, and not only was it over a 50-year period, but it was also to respondents in all 50 states. So the author is, again, trying to provide a sense of judgment or a sense of evaluation to let us know that they think that this particular piece of research is based upon, or this particular piece of literature is based upon good research. And if you look at that last sentence, which again has been added as part of the judgment aspect or part of the evaluation aspect, they go even further and state as much. In fact, Twenge's research is the only work into generational differences that is both reliable and valid, along with including a broad and representative sample. All right, so this is what we would describe as a critique through evaluation or a critique through judgment. So for the purposes of your literature review, you want to make sure that you are either providing this kind of context, which for most graduate students, this is the easier route to take because you're basically just putting in little snippets that are describing the literature to provide the reader with an understanding of how the results or how the um, statements that you're making about that literature have been generated, what they're based upon. If you feel comfortable, you can then start to make judgments about that literature and about the research in which it's based upon, assuming it is based upon research. Now, this is something, I'll be honest with you, graduate students oftentimes 
don't feel as comfortable doing, um, making evaluations or providing judgment on literature, uh, particularly for some of the more seminal works in the field, which is why this particular model, this context model, is perfectly acceptable. And you will see complete literature reviews that are written using this and only this. The key thing is that you're doing at least this and that you're not writing just a summary of the literature. Because as you can see now, now that you've seen both the context and the evaluation, what we learned about these three pieces of literature and what we learned about this generation of students from these three pieces of literature was quite inaccurate without providing that context and without providing that evaluation, that simply a summary of this literature really didn't tell us all that much at all about what we actually know about the field.